everyone. Welcome back to another Intune Barbershop. So today we're going to continue on uh, talking about updates. Uh, I'm Josh Gatewood. And I'm Kevin Vanover. And, and today we're going to focus on using feature updates. So we're going to build on in our previous video where we had a quality update ring. So that's like your monthly updates. And then feature updates, think of that almost like service packs, right? So we just had a big feature update with 24H2 for Windows 11. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to get to 24H2 and even how to upgrade your Windows 10 devices to Windows 11. All right. So Kevin. All right, I'll take you. it from there. Yeah, so if you were in our previous video, we talked about, hey, let's go ahead and create a Patch Tuesday Windows Update ring. And so I created this pilot ring for uh, in, for the Intune Barbershop. And so what I, and one of the things that I emphasized on that, and let me get into the properties of the update ring, was making sure that you set the feature update deferral period to zero. What that do, does is it allows us to control the feature update outside in the feature update blade and because and the reason was because we would see clients that would put in the highest number they could get in here so they'd do like 365 days so it would at least push out the the uh feature update to you know a, a year from now and so they, they felt safe doing that and so i always try to educate them hey no 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 set this to zero and then we will go and we will go into the feature update blade where we have more granular control on how that gets deployed so yep. back out into the intune interface any questions yep. on that josh yeah, no, that's just want to like on that that zero days for feature deferral and you can see that on the far right column. Um, that's one of that's like a quirk inside of Intune, right? So um, just make sure the in your quality update rings, your monthly update rings, always zero, always zero, always zero. So we can control it with the feature updates. Yeah. So then if we go to the feature update blade, this is where you'll see that I've got a couple out here that are created. Uh, I'll create a net new one here so we can go through the process and we'll call this uh, feature update 24H24 window, or sorry, Intune Arbor Shop. Be nice if I could type. All right, so then you can see there that in the dropdown, that's where I have the versions that are available to me within Intune to upgrade my devices to. Now, it's something that's very important is to make sure that you understand, you know, are your devices capable? And I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. But for now, we're going to do Windows 11 24H2. And we want to make available to users as a required update. If you do optional, the users are going to have the ability to choose. So if you're trying to actually roll this out and you're trying to make it happen, you probably don't want to give them the option. You know, some users, have been, I don't want to be inconvenienced, so they'll pick, I don't know. All right, so another thing, though, that's really important here is if you have a device that isn't eligible for Windows 11, you can check this little box, um, which will upgrade them to the latest version of Windows 10. And this goes to our conversation, and I'll show you where you can see that data or those analytics. Um, but essentially, there, there's probably going to be a double hop. If you have devices that are on Windows 10 and you want to get them to 24H2, you're going to have to try to first get them to Windows 11 uh, at a, a different or a, an earlier uh, feature version before you can go to the 24H2 from Windows 10. Just be aware of that. All right, and then as far as the rollout options go, you can make the update available as soon as possible. So if you're targeting a pilot group of devices, sure, why not? Let's go ahead and make it available as soon as possible because you've already communicated to you know the the, the lab or to the test users, hey, I'm going to get this done today. Um, so I want you to be aware. It might be on a Friday where you know the sort of day is coming to an end or what have you. Um, if you want to make it available on a specific date, you tried to plan this out a little bit better. This is where you can make a calendar you know, decision and you can say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it for Friday the 18th. And I'm going to make sure that's when it's made available to those devices. And then it'll happen. The other option here is gradually. I never like this one. Um, I'm just like, why not create, you know, just let's, uh, let's create four rings, feature update rings, and let's target each one of them on specific dates. But this way, with this sort of gradual rollout, you need to go pick an end date. So let's say we want to get it done by the 8th of November. So you've got this time period, but then you have to set a period of days between. We'll do two. Now, actually, we'll do one. So what this means is, is that say you had 100 devices, it's going to pick 25 devices for the first ring update, and it's going to push out the 24H2 update. You have no control of what those 25 devices are. And then it's going to do a day of rest, and then it's going to make it available to 25 more, a day of rest, and then 25 more, and a day of rest, and then your last 25. You don't have any control over which of those 25 devices are going to get the update, whether it's in the first rollout or the third rollout. So it's something that I just don't like that that sort of 
mystery. Um, yeah. And so I just choose to not use this methodology and I don't recommend it to anybody. I always it's, tell them, hey, go for it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also, it's not like, a, you know, say you've got like a hundred devices and, you know, four, four days uh, to be 25 each. One might be 30, one may be 22, right? So it's not all, it's consistent of being exactly 25 as well. It's like, I'm going to push, push it to these devices and then maybe like a couple of them aren't online. So then you've got to wait. So, um, yeah, no, that's a, the gradual is a, uh, um, it, it allows you to stagger it, but it's also, you do lose that control exactly what Kevin said. All right, perfect. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on here. And so this is when we would assign it to our group. So I'll just add it to my Avengers group. And I guess like, I'm is a it device-based group, right? Yes. Yes. Just wanted to make sure on video, I'll say device groups for updates. <laughs> Not user groups. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll go ahead and create this. Now, uh, one of the things that we sort of mentioned there um, was, you know, in the update rings, we set that feature period to zero uh, so that we could make sure the deferral period to zero so that we would make sure that it would give us control of the update in this blade. And now we have that and it's assigned to the same group of devices. Now, if you want to understand what devices are going to be capable of receiving this upgrade, you can go into reports. And then you go into data endpoint analytics and then work from anywhere. And then you'll see at the top in the ribbon windows. Now, what you'll see as you've got three or four devices, I've got two devices that are more than capable or already have upgraded because they we were in that group. But then I've got a couple of devices that are not capable and you tr ask yourself why what's going on? Well, if you go all the way to the far right, you'll see the Windows 11 is Windows 11 readiness reason. Try to say that fast three times. And you can see. I don't think I'd say it fast one time. <laughs> <laughs> what you'll see is, is that these two devices are virtual devices, virtual machines. And so neither one of them have the required TPM uh, piece that would be needed for that. But then also you can see that the second device doesn't have enough RAM. It doesn't have enough CPU cores. So this is a way that you can see for lifecycle management purposes, maybe I need to look at replacing these devices if we want to really get our environment to a Windows 11 state. And maybe, you know, that would then sort of trigger uh, the powers that be within the organization to start looking at doing lifecycle management or upgrades to your hardware uh, so that you can accomplish that. So that's it in a quick, nut a quick nutshell. Yeah. No, <laughs> so Josh? Is, yeah. Well done, Kevin. Yeah. And, and completely agree. So use this almost as like your device refresh cycle report because we've got until September of next year uh, to get off of Windows 10. Uh, so the ones that can't get upgraded to Windows 10, just start thinking about like, uh, going through procurement to acquire new devices for that. So um, it really is like you have the quality update ring set up and then set that to zero, add the feature update ring, and that's how you can get all your devices using Intune cloud-based management up to uh, Windows 11 and including 24H2. So good stuff. So thanks, Kevin. Uh, thanks, everyone, for Thank watching. You, and we'll uh, talk with you all on our next one. Thank you.